Another possible biasing scheme for the class AB output stage is what's known as a VBE multiplier. Uh, I've drawn it here. You can see we still have our output transistors QN and QP. And now our biasing network consists of uh, another transistor Q1 biased with two resistors R1 and R2. And there is a, a current source I bias which is providing the biasing current uh, for for that uh, biasing configuration, the VBE multiplier. Now, in order to see how that uh, works in providing a stable VBB voltage, um, let's go ahead and analyze the circuit. I've written there that uh, if I neglect any base current going into my transistor Q1, I can assume that R1 and R2 form a, a voltage divider. Uh, where all the current IR that is flowing through R2 is also flowing through R1. No current going into the base of Q1. And therefore I can express that current IR as being approximately equal to the base emitter voltage across transistor Q1 divided by R1. That's just by Ohm's law. Um, in that case, I can calculate my VBB voltage um, which is going to be equal to the current IR times the series combinations of resistors R1 and R2. I can calculate replacing IR with its value as being VBB equal to uh, VBE1 times R1 over R1 is 1 plus R2 over R1. So now I have come up with an expression for my bias voltage VBB which is proportional to um, 1 plus R2 over R1. So basically the designer can control it by setting the ratio of those two resistors. And as we know in IC design, uh, it's going to be easy to set resistor ratios accurately, much more easy than it will be uh, to set absolute resistor values accurately. Notice that all that is multiplied by VBE1 uh, the VBE of transistor Q1, and that's the name VBE multiplier. Now, this provides more stability for the value of VBB than the prior scheme with the series diodes that we saw. And you may ask why, because we still have that dependency, uh, you know, on VBE1. We know that as VBE1 varies, the value of VBB is going to vary. And the idea here is that um, any variation in VBE1 is going to be a very small variation. The reason for that is notice that uh, even if we had the worst case scenario where QN is sourcing the maximum amount of current to the load, and therefore the base of transistor QN is drawing uh, a lot of that bias current, I bias, and so that is going to uh, make the collector current through Q1 decrease as a lot of the bias current is now being fed into the base of QN. Uh, a decrease in IC1, it's only going to cause a very small change in VBE1, and that's because there is a, an exponential relationship between IC1 and VBE1 given by the Shockley equation. IC1 is approximately equal to the saturation current of Q1 e to the VBE1 divided by Vt, the thermal voltage. And so again, uh, a large variation in collector current is going to mean a small variation in VBE1. And therefore, the value of VBB is going to be uh, fairly stable regardless of how much uh, load current I'm sourcing. Let's go ahead and highlight this expression. If we wanted to um, calculate the value of uh, VBE that we need in order to set a particular VBB voltage, we will do so by noting that VBE1 is going to be equal to IC1 divided by IS1. I'm sorry. It's going to be uh, VT times natural log of IC1 divided by IS1. 